by Nina. Well, Nephilim 3 made another video uh, trying to debunk evolution, but trying to do so he made some mistakes and I will show you what mistakes he made. Hey folks, you know how creationists are always telling you that the phylogeny, the phylogenetic uh, uh, arrangement of creatures in a Darwinian tree of life is a fallacious idea. And that it's not evidence of evolution that evolutionists arrange creatures in this supposed Darwinian tree of life. And uh, uh, based upon their ridiculous assumptions that everything on the planet is related, that God may create any original kinds of life. But here's something of interest. I want, I'll sh I'm going to go through a few things, and I hope you'll stay with me. Well, yes, Nephilim Free, I stayed with you how much it pained me to listen to your awful voice talking about these things but I stayed with you and I noticed your deceit and I will point people to it. I'm going to show you a few, uh, I'm going to go from link to link and show you how uh, scientists continuously, secular scientists continuously discredit their own ideas and this happens to be related to a, a discovered whale. Here we see an article at CNN.com of a whale uh, that was beached. They say, a whale of a discovery makes scientific splat. It's the world's rarest rare and one of the rarest mammals. This is a beaked whale. They're very rarely seen. They've, there are only uh, relatively few photographs of them. It is a very rare animal. And that was deceit number one. This is what the article actually says. It is one of the world's rarest will and one of its rarest mammals. Almost a thing of a legend. Scientists have never seen a spade tooth beak will alive and until recently only had limited skeletal evidence they existed. So rare is a species that when a pair of dead whales washed up on the on a New Zealand beach in late 2010, scientists didn't even know what they had. So if you wonder what the deceit is in this case, well it's very simple. The species that was on the beach in 2010 was a species that has never been seen. It doesn't say that big whales have never been seen. In fact scientists know that about 21 specific species of beaked whales exist currently. Just bother looking it up, type in beaked whale, enter and go to a wiki page and you'll see it yourself. They discovered this one beached and they say uh, they're happy when they find it, they call themselves giddy. Now this, this uh, Anton Van Hilden, collection manager of the marine mammals at the Museum of, the, of New Zealand, uh, uh, states, it was like finding the Holy Grail when it comes to whale, like finding the Holy Grail. Now, this, it created a splash because these creatures were believed to be extinct since the Miocene, five and a half million years ago, 20 to five and a half million years ago, supposedly. And this is deceit number two. I'm not sure where Nephilim 3 got his numbers from five and a half million years ago. I'm sure he got it from some article, but the CNN article doesn't mention any extinction of this species. Now. Nephilim Free wants to make you believe in this case that this specific whale they found on the beach was thought to be extinct. It could be, but notice that I mentioned a few minutes ago that there are about 21 species of beaked whale known to science. So, which species of beaked whale is Nephilim free talking about that is has that has been extinct for five and a half million years I don't know and I don't think and I think he doesn't know either anyway next he goes talk about the difference of about species and kinds and all that I'm skipping that part and I'm skipping to the next point of deceit that he is presenting us with 
And he is linking us to an article by Anton van Helden, Anton van Helden. So let's go. But here's what they state at the bottom. We can now confirm that the spade-toothed whale is an extant. In other words, it is a currently living species and not extinct as previously thought. And for the first time, we have a description of the world's rarest and perhaps most enigmatic marine mammal. Moving forward. No, let's not move forward. Let's bother reading the whole Alinea except the last sentence. This is what the Alinea says. Rapid advances in DNA technology are having a profound effect on our understanding of the natural world and have added value to museum and other references, reference collections. This has been particularly important in the field of conservation biology where losses in biodiversity are increasingly evident. And now you can talk, Nephilim Free. We can now confirm that the spade-toothed whale is an extant. In other words, it is a currently living species and not extinct as previously thought. And for the first time we have a description of the world's rarest and perhaps most enigmatic marine member. And in my opinion this was the seat number three. Because Nephilim Free is so a loving guy talking about DNA, he probably didn't want to tell you that DNA is very important to prove the scientific point so that is why he did not bother reading the first sentence of that alinea the seat number three let's go on to the next bit they describe in here he refers one of his references is this article a resurrection of mesalodon transversi and so I'm going, I'm going to that one I click and it won't open so I went and found it resurrection of mesalodon transversi Gray, 1874, senior son, uh, okay, and now this paper was written in 95, so. Skipping a bit. And now, here's, here, here's where it gets fun. Stick with me for just a moment. You know how evolutionists claim any changes to an organism, any even varieties within the same kind of life represents separate species, and this is evidence of evolution, supposedly, right? Mm-hmm. They've examined these things. And these things. If you go to Nephilim's free video which I will be linking below you'll notice he has he has the tendency to mix up organisms species kinds etc deceit number four which I will not elaborate on because I will get back on this later on supposedly uh, they had found three separate species of them that they claimed were evidence of evolution that the creature has speciated in the three different ones and this is the seat number five actually the seat number four and five are one of the same kind so perhaps I should say 4a and 4b but let's name it five Nephilim Free is saying here that they found three species three different species three and we creation creationists would call these varieties and but the evolutionist labels them as species and say look it's evolving it's slightly different by color size shape or pattern these are not morphological by the way and this is the seat number six he is saying that these three species evolved into each other in some magnificent way or whatever what he's trying to say well, that's a failure, because I read that article and I will link it below, but I, I looked up the words evolve, evolving, evolution. Well, I link it below, go to the article and search through it. You won't find the word evolve or evolving anywhere in the article. So what the fuck is he talking about? If this scientifically published article by Anton van Helden was supposed to explain how one species of big whale evolved into another big whale, then you'd think the article would mention it. Now here it is. Here we represent the details of molecular and morphological evidence under fine, un, under fine, uh, unifying these three specimens, resulting in the synonymy. Uh, syn synonymy of M. Bahamundi with M. Transversi. In other words, 
if you if you understand what he's saying here, it's not hard. The details of the morphological and molecular evidence unify these three species: Pitt Island, White Island, Robinson Crusoe Island. The sheet number seven, the holy number seven, and the most appalling one. And I can break it down for you in two words in Nephilim Free's own words. Specimens, species, specimens, species, specimens, species, specimens, species, specimens, species. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not an English native speaker, but I know the difference between a specimen and a species. And go bother looking it up in a fucking dictionary. If you, if you understand what he's saying here, it's not hard. And here you are creationists wondering why atheists don't take you serious. It's because of people like Nephilim Free. In other words, they've come to the conclusion based on the actual evidence in recent years that these supposed three species are not three separate species but the same creature. Nope. The scientists concluded that the three specimens they found are one species and that is a whole different ball game. Previously labeled as three separate species given three different species names. Bahamandi, Transversi, different species names because they think it's evidence that the thing is evolving. Skip a bit. Isn't that funny? The evolutionists refute their idea that any slight difference in a creature, one to the other, is evidence that the thing is evolving. And they instantly label it, BAM! A new species! A different species! No, you fucking moron. You just don't know the difference between a specimen and a species. I am the jungle hyena. Nephilim Free is a moron and God does not exist.